Welcome back guys. So today we're going to be taking a quick look at the Fire TV Stick Lite from Amazon. More specifically, we're going to be loading some retro games onto this thing. So I'm going to quickly go through this process because this thing has been on sale for $18 recently and it's well worth it. We're going to load up RetroArch. We're going to play some NES Super Nintendo games. I'm going to run through the process, show you guys what you need to do in order to get this set up and just a matter of minutes, really. So in the box for $18, still at that price currently, and I would imagine it would be through Black Friday, you get a remote, you get two AAA batteries, you get the Fire Stick Lite dongle. You get everything you need other than a controller if you want a game. So you're going to want to buy another controller, or if you already have a Bluetooth controller handy, you can go ahead and use that. So we're going to be syncing up the 8-bit, though, SN30 Pro. It also comes with a little extension HDMI in case you can't plug this thing directly into your TV. Some TVs just kind of a cramped space. So it's nice that it came with the little adapter there. And what else do we get? We get a little power brick that goes along with the power supply. So this thing, it just doesn't plug into the HDMI. You also have to have USB power. So if your TV has USB, you could plug it in or use the external brick that it came with. Like I said, we're going to be pairing this controller directly to this Fire Stick as well. So we could play our Super Nintendo, NES games, few other things, right? Now for me to record footage, I do have to use the splitter because it has that HDCP protection on the Fire Stick and you normally cannot record footage that way. So I have to use this. Just wanted to point it out because a lot of people do ask me about how to record certain things and you do need a splitter for devices like this. So here we go. We've got the Fire Stick booted up. I'm kind of fast forwarding through a few things as when you initially pop it in, it's gonna update, install, whatever it needs to do. So this took a little while. I'm just fast forwarding through it. It already had my account information set up because I ordered directly through Amazon Prime. So I didn't have to set up the internet or anything like that. Now, one of the things that I've seen that a lot of people tell you to do, and I think this may have been for older Fire Stick products, is go to My Fire TV or Devices and then turn on install unknown apps. Well, you don't really need to do that because when you use an app that requires that, it'll prompt you to give it permission. So this is a step you don't really have to worry about until you get to installing what you need. So we're going to apps, categories, we're going to utility, and we're gonna download this program here called Downloader. There's gonna be another program I'm gonna download in here as well. Of course, there's gonna be different options. You could download different things that do the same thing, but we're just gonna go through it this way for now, as it worked for me and it worked just fine. So we're gonna go ahead, get that downloader open. I'm gonna put the URL directly to RetroArch, the APK. You can either put that in here and directly go to it and download it once you're in that downloader app, or you could just search for RetroArch, go to the website, and download the Android version of it directly to your Fire Stick. So that's what we're looking for. We're gonna go down here, just click download, get that thing going, and then once we have that downloaded, we'll install it. Fast forwarding a little bit through this download. Took a little while, took a little while. 146 megabytes, not too bad. Took about a minute or so. Install it, and I believe once everything goes through the process here, it'll, it'll pretty much say, like, yeah, right here. For your security, is not allowed to install unknown apps. So we have to select that option for the downloader application. So once that's done, you can go back and it will install it just fine. It may prompt you a couple times to install while it's staging the app here. So just bear with it. Once it pops up, there you go. Click install. And then it'll install for real this time, right? Now, once you have that done and it's installed, we're gonna open it up. That way, RetroArch will do its basic thing of getting like pre-set up pretty much. So click OK on everything that pops up, granting access to RetroArch. I don't think they're gonna try to steal anything from you. They just want access to the device here. So it's extracting the base.apk. And from there, we have a couple other little things that we'd like to do to get this ready to roll. So going back to our settings, Let's go ahead and get a controller set up to this. We could have done this earlier. Some of these steps can be done whatever order you want. With the 8-Bito SN30 Pro, 
you hold start and the B button to put it into pair mode for Android. And as you see, it popped up. I used the remote, paired it. And now I'm using the controller to navigate through the menu here and to be able to play my games and do everything else. So now that we have that out of the way, like I said, you could have done that earlier. It doesn't really matter the order that you do that in. From here, we're gonna wanna go ahead and download some cores to get ready for what we wanna play. So you could do this at any time. I'm gonna go ahead and download some Nintendo cores for NES and Super Nintendo. I would recommend with this device, you know, testing a few different ones out because not every core on here is gonna work great on this device. Most of the NES, Super Nintendo ones do other than like BS NES. So keep that in mind. You may wanna play with the cores, figuring out how they work, which ones work best for you. So we'll go through that a little bit here. We're gonna go ahead and quit out of RetroArch. Now the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is get some games loaded up on the device to actually use RetroArch. So going back to the utilities section within the apps, we have a few options. The one that I've seen recommended quite a bit is this ES File Explorer file manager. And this works great and it works easy. I've used it before but it doesn't look like there's like a non-premium version. You can get a trial for like a week, but what we're gonna do is on this specific application, navigate the network and then go to view on PC. Now, once you have that turned on, it will show you what the IP address and port number is you need to input into a FTP program. I'm using FileZilla and I just simply put that information into the bar up top and then click quick connect and we were good to go. And as you see, we have access on that right panel there of our Fire Stick Lite. Now I navigated to the RetroArch folder. I created a new directory and called it ROMs. And then within that, I made a Super Nintendo and an NES ROM folder to try to neatly organize everything. I'm just simply gonna drag and drop over a selection of Super Nintendo games to the NES folder or the Super NES folder, my bad and then some NES games to the NES folder. Now, once we have that all transferred over, depending on how many files, how big they are, it could take a little while. So keep that in mind. I'm fast forwarding through this so you don't have to sit here for minutes on end. But once that's done, back on our Fire Stick, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is go to import content on RetroArch, navigate to that directory, find ROMs, and then just scan that directory. It'll go through it depending on how many games you have and it'll scan through it and get everything ready for you to go. So as you see, we had 348 files there and it's scanning through NES and Super Nintendo. Very simple stuff here. And with this 8-bit though controller, I didn't have to like configure it at all. Everything just works fine. So now we'll have those two like system icons at the bottom, Super Nintendo and NES, and you can scroll through your games. Yeah, of course, there's tons of different options on how to have RetroArch look. We're not really bothering with any of that today. Just wanna test this out, show you guys the basics. So here you go. We have all the cores listed that we downloaded. And like I said, you may find one like some of the BSNES, it, it's not good on this device. So it's really slow. You may not wanna use those. And if you do accidentally use one, you can go back and reset that core association. That way, when you run the game again, you could select something else. Now, the one thing I wanna point out in my video here with this footage is the games run great. Input latency seems fine to me. Everything is looking and sounding good. Now, since there's that protections and whatnot, and I had to kind of do some weird workarounds to record this footage, I couldn't get the audio to come through properly, but just have to, you know, take my word, having this plugged into a monitor with speakers or a TV, whatever, the sound is fine. I haven't had any issues with any of these games playing anything with the audio or the visuals. But like I said, sometimes it's gonna depend too on which core you use on if the game performs properly or not. So something you'll just wanna play with a little bit, but this is very simple. Just within minutes, you can get some games loaded up and ready to play on this cheap device, 18 freaking dollars. And you have like a classic retro gaming machine that you could do tons of other things with. You can watch movies, you can watch TV, you can load up other types of things. But a lot of people, I think they look at this like it's a daunting task, like you have to hack the fire stick. We didn't do any kind of hacking essentially. Everything we did was legitimate, being able to install applications and then 
transfer over through FTP. We didn't have to, you know, root the device or do anything crazy like that. So this isn't really even that big of a deal, but I think some people look at it and don't really realize how simple it is. So that's why I wanted to do this video. And as you see, we reset the core association. That way we can select the core again. Now, whatever association you pick, every time you start that game, it's gonna use that same core. So that's why it's nice that you see that we have that option down there to reset it in case the core that you're set up on doesn't work properly for that game you're playing. So just wanted to kind of show you guys the basics there. There's so many different things we could do with RetroArch, but just for the basics of getting some simple retro games playing on this, this was simple. If you guys want to see some follow-up, maybe getting a little more in-depth on emulating on this cheap device, what other systems we could play, I just figured NES Super Nintendo to start. This is my first time throwing these games on here and testing this specific device out. I've never used a Fire Stick Lite before. And I think, man, for 18 bucks, well worth it. Well worth it. So I'll have a link in the description for this product if you're interested, a link for the controller that I'm using as well, but any Bluetooth controller will do just fine. So hey guys, really do appreciate you watching. We're on our way to 100,000 subscribers and you know we're gonna get there because of you guys, so really do appreciate it. And slap that like button like the little bitch it is. It deserves it, you know what I'm saying? And I will catch you guys next time. Peace out, bye-bye, and boom. Bye!